This is the radio, the AM only radio in the 1980 Ford Fairmont I've been slowly kind of working on and restoring. And it seems like I remember this radio uh, misbehaving when I parked the car some 12 or so years ago. And yesterday I got the dash loose and I pulled the speaker out and tested the speaker and the speaker is fine it's a little rattling in it but there's no problems with the sensitivity or anything of it um, it's also a bit muddy not much high end it's mostly bass which if I remember right that's kinda what these were but hey it's AM radio so I figured it would be an interesting video project to kind of take this thing out tear it apart and see what's wrong with it and it actually sounds like it might be a problem in the the IF or uh, somewhere between the volume control and the detector because there's plenty of sensitivity it's just there's no volume you can see that's quite awake So I'll turn it all the way up. Uh, uh, the beast Debiato got mipped at Donald uh, Sterling because he got mipped at her, mm -hmm. sold her freebie tickets mm -hmm. uh, to the game. La gente solo Saturdays. Uh, uh, have more room on the floor. If I get it. Uh, <laughs> Man, he has a hard... The 700. Uh, the 20 luck. Three, 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 four, five, eight. What about... You can hear there's the sensitivity is is all the way there. It's pick, pulling in plenty of stations. It's just there's no volume. So um, if I remember right, which I probably don't. But I remember this happening kind of suddenly, so I kind of doubt, thinking back, I kind of doubt it's a capacitor. I mean, maybe it's almost like... You know, maybe it's like a broken solder joint or one of the chips or something went bad in it. So the first thing is to kind of get it out of here and... Um, check it out which that in itself is going to be a, a task I know that this stuff just pulls off so yeah I get a deep socket and get these screws off and I believe there might be something holding it from the back yeah there is there's a Feels like about a 10 millimeter nut on the back. So, okay, let's uh, next let's get it out and have a look at the inside. So this is simply just a beauty beauty plate. So it looks like it's gonna have to come out the back, and that that could be a pain in the ass if I have to take the dash off to get the radio out. Well, that came out easier than I expected. Check this out. Ford Aerospace and Communications Corporation. I wonder if there was a SAMS on this. I should look. Well, look at this. I actually have it. And it's actually available for download. So let's slurp this up. Well, let's see. We have a ARF amp. And we have an, a converter. 
and we have a converter and then we have one IF amp and then we have a detector and these look like they are NPN not that that means they're good and then so it's got three transistors and one IC for the audio output and it does have some electrolytics although not many 1980 series not much to this thing three transistors and one IC I don't even see many electrolytics in it. So here's the volume control right here. Volume and tone. So we seem to have a good bit of activity there. Um, and I don't really see any electrolytics a 0 0.027 that's probably not a 0.47 that's a tone capacitor this is probably one right here this 1500 UF but I'm pretty sure that's good by the amount of noise we get through this uh, this when this crackling thing so yeah, designed to last, man. Just not a whole bunch in here. Could be this very well could be this transistor. This transistor was weak or one of these resistors. AGC detector. Well, we got a schematic. We could definitely fix it. One one modification reversible modification I might do to this radio which I think would be pretty pretty useful would be to add into this line right here the line that goes into the volume control a switching female um, audio jack so that I can plug my phone or mp3 player or whatever into this thing and that way I can you know use this as um, as a stereo. I'll probably put another stereo in the car but it would be neat to have this so that with a little audio plug hidden somewhere so that I can just unplug plug the phone or, or whatever into this if I need it. Yeah there are some electrolytics there of course they're on the hardest hardest part to get to and it looks like there's one here but this is old-school American-made stuff this stuff really probably doesn't go bad and the thing is is a nice thing is is I can I can bridge these from the top I can jump across them with another cap and see if it affects it I think that's the tone capacitor down there Not much to this. Man, this is simple. They tune these with slugs. These are these inductors move in and out of these coils. And that's how they tune these. They don't use a variable tuning capacitor in auto radios. This is like how Zenith used to do the early FM receivers where they had the slug tuned. And they also use a lower IF frequency. They use like 262. And they use 262.5 kilohertz. My signal generator doesn't even go down that low.
Not that I would even attempt to align this. I guess there's a list of the autos that this radio came in. So just about, ooh, Pinto and Bobcat. So I guess just about everything they made, this was probably the low end option. I can pretty much just do a quick test on these running audio through them like I usually do. Um, just like the unit itself does, and this one's okay. This one seems to be okay too. This one's not open. And this one doesn't appear to be a problem either. And that little blue one down there is the tone capacitor, so I'm not even worried about that. Um, I think we might have a bad IF transistor. I wonder how you even get this apart. Okay, we're going to do a little testing here. We have our battery, a signal source there, which is the phone and a speaker, and... I was kind of thinking about this and I was came to the conclusion that well hoping that it's not the the pot that's bad which it very well could be that the pot is open um, you know because that's one part that is not going to be easily replaced so that would be a real bummer if that was open so what we'll do is we'll just see what happens here get a copyright scourge and I'm using an isolation capacitor here. This is really hard to hold the camera and do this. Okay, so the pot is not bad, that's a good thing. So it appears that the audio output coming out of here, going into the amp board, everything is good from here on. So I am looking at that IF transistor, which of course is right down there. It's right there. It's got that little yellow thing on top of it. So this is volume wide open. Well, it's real. It's real simple. It's real simple. I mean, it's real simple. So right here is where I was feeding the phone into 
this uh, right here. Is this right here? And um, three three point three k. So that is that guy right there, orange, orange, red. I guess I could feed the audio in on the back side of that. You know, let's try that. Turn this down a little bit. I'll tell you, that doesn't sound too bad. So, we're definitely, okay, this has got to be, is this the detector diode right here? Is that what this is? Let the airplane go by. Okay. So that's applying the signal to this point right here and this point right here. And this, of course, most of this would be shunted off the ground through the transformer. But I might still want to check that. Okay, this germanium diode here measures 300 millivolts drop one way and infinite the other way. So I'm going to say that's good. So I'm looking at you, homie. So what do we have? We have 0 0.1, 0 0.7, and it looks like 8.2. That would, that would be right because that's the bias. It's interesting, we, we got one millivolt here, and then we get 100 millivolts over here. That tells you the gain of that. And we get, uh, this is interesting, 15 microvolts here. So you could kind of follow the gain. But I'm, I'm looking at this guy, because we ha it does tune stations, and it does have sensitivity. So let's see, whatever... AR202 is. Well, I gotta say, my DC voltages are right on. That's my base voltage, which it calls for 0.7, and my collector voltage is 6.35, and it looks like that's what it calls for there, 6.3. Um, hmm. Well, I gotta say, I'm a bit uh, confused here. Um, or maybe not confused, maybe lost. You know, I have good sensitivity, uh, which would indicate to me that these stages back here are working fine. And I, um, I check the voltages on these two transistors and they're right on, as is the IF amp. So what I'm wondering is I'm wondering about these capacitors inside here. And of course those would be inside these cans because I have just got so much audio sensitivity here. I mean, I mean that's just with the, you know, the phone on the lowest it'll do. Turn this up and just. So I'm 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 looking at this, and I think the way to go about this um, is to get a scope on here. And this transistor is tough to get at, but I I can actually get at it from the resistors on top 
But you know, look at, we need to do is look at the uh, signal on this uh, collector and then look at it over here coming out on the detector. You know, and if there's a whole bunch of signal here and there's nothing here, well then IF canage. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the collector if I can get to it here on the scope. So that's on two volts per division, so that's a good uh, one, two, three, eight volts. That's on the collector of the IF transistor. Okay, let's see, can I get to the base? I think. Not much on the base. Okay. So that's the collector. So it's going into the transformer. Let's look at what's coming out. Well, you won't get a lemon. That's for damn sure. That's what's going into the detector. That's what's coming out of the detector. Let's turn this thing down. Let's go down to um, a tenth of a volt per division. There's nothing there. Okay, that's five millivolts per division. That's what's coming out of the transformer. Let's take a look at the base. Okay, there's the base of the transistor. Um, I don't think there's any question that the problem is inside that uh, IF transformer. There's there's a good signal going into it. That's the signal going into it, and that's the, that's the signal coming out right there. Well, I am going to have to call this an end of the line, because the problem is inside, inside that. Now, even though I shouldn't, You know what, let me mark these. Can't turn them, they're frozen. I can't turn them. They're frozen, and I don't want to. I don't want to break them. Okay, it's getting louder and I got it cranked all the way in.
trying to do this crap one-handed sometimes is so annoying. Well, the problem is obviously with this one right here because because the the bottom one seems like it's peaking when I adjust it. I'm I'm you can hear it shifting the IF, but the top one is not not peaking. I screw it all the way in and it starts to peak. So this capacitor has got to be open on this one. So I'm. I'm going to assume that that capacitor right there is open because this is the one I was turning and you could hear it shifting the IF frequency. I have a feeling it's this one is open. And if it was a bigger can I would try and take it apart and deal with it but I, I you know that the capacitors in these cans are like little surface mount chip capacitors and I just don't know if they're repairable but hey I'm gonna upload this video if anybody has any experience with pulling these little micro IF cans apart and changing these capacitors and even what value would this be you know this is 262.5 kilohertz you know what what value would that be 200 picofarads 220 something like that I just have no idea this is this is all a guessing game for me so anyway uh, thanks for watching more to come later actually what I'm gonna do probably is I'm going to put a uh, an external audio input jack into here so I can feed my iPod or whatever into it. Um, I would consider pulling this IF assembly out of here and looking at it. If I remember correctly those little chip capacitors are actually on the bottom wedged up in a slot on the bottom where you can see them with the thing off the circuit board. But um, I don't think they're micas. I, th I think they're little chip capacitors, but I don't remember. Um, so yeah, it you know it it will not be easy to get this thing apart. You know you'd literally have to desolder all of the tuna tuning inductors and everything to get this apart so I don't know if this is really worth attempting to fix for an AM radio but what I, what I will do is I will put it back in the car I will leave it and I'll simply just disconnect this wire and put a run a piece of shielded cable outside you know so I can uh, plug an auxiliary thing into it and then I'll put a good stereo in the car somewhere else but yeah I don't want to I don't want to ruin this. I'll write a little note and stick it down in here or something. I was playing around with putting a capacitor from the detector to ground and I can create a definite peak here.
Ben James Briswick, an auto editor at Edmunds.com, points to three models that offer you the most bang for your buck. The Mazda 3, this car is fantastic to drive. It's a really nice high-end interior and a lot of standard features that are easy to use. Honda Civic, it has that Honda dependability and it has great interior, great fuel economy. And then you have a Kia Forte, which is not something you might expect to Kia, but this car has great design. And again, it has even more available features than those other ones and it has a great warranty because it's a Kia. And on these less expensive models, technology that comes standard can keep the most... So... All I was doing was I was putting a capacitor 300 picofarad from there to there, which this is ground. That's assuming this one's open, but I can't, I can't get to this. That's internal. So, yeah, this is definitely gone. And adding that little 300 picofarad from there to there and then retuning this made all that difference. So that proves my diagnosis there. I might just solder that in there and peek it up and and leave it and still go with my modification here. That way I still would have AM radio that kind of works in the event of an emergency. All right, continuing on with something I probably thought I ended 20 minutes ago. Um, I decided to just tack a 120 picofarad capacitor there and then I peaked up the can. That's just going from the detector to ground so I'm missing you know a whole half of the coil but uh, let's see how it works. So you know what, it's not ideal, but it's it's a lot better than it was. I mean, it'll be usable. And then what I can do is uh, um, disconnect this and put a uh, self-disconnecting uh, uh, female plug there so that I can still plug it in and unplug it like an auxiliary input. And that way, you know, I'll have AM radio in case there's some kind of emergency or traffic or whatever. Let's have a quick listen to how this actually works in the car with the factory speaker and the factory antenna. Mention uh, quickly before I go that uh, that twenty cent wager on Monday uh, yes. that uh, that pick, pick six. After breakfast, Lee Brown will fire. I so the Now you're having a total hip replacement, which is a really good operation, and you'd be mobile after. I'd like it because I think. And you can hear him. He is a role model and. And cash back from Huntington Beach Ford on Beach Boulevard near Ellis in Huntington Beach. Or go to HuntingtonBeachFord.com. Call 1 800 Cellophon. That's 1 800 S. The 
this is K Mozart. art. I don't know why why anyone would really want to listen to uh, classical music on AM. But anyway, it seems to work work well enough. I I decided I'm not going to modify it. I'm just going to uh, put another radio underneath here or something um, with some speakers in the back. Just leave this all factory in stock. You can hear that it's kind of distorted and it sounds like the AM alignment, the IF alignment's off, like it's shifted real hard over to one side. Well, that's because the capacitor I put in there is not connected across the outside of a center tapped coil. It's just connected, you know, between one side of it. So it's like I'm missing half of that right there. It's probably way out of tune. But, you know, I've done the best I can. That's, that's about it. You know, without risking destroying it, I think this is the best route. So, anyway, enough of listening to me babble on for 45 minutes.